You are listening to another Always Moto production. The Always Moto Podcast with your host, David Hogan. This show contains information about injuries to riders competing in AMA Supercross, AMA Motocross, MXGP, Pro MX, and other international moto events. The information discussed may be unsettling to some listeners. It might be incomplete or based on medical opinions due to riders tending to hide the details of their injuries. We are here to explain the information and increase injury understanding and visibility for the fans. There might be coarse language and the odd stuff up along the way. If any of this offends you, turn us off right now. I'd like to remind you that he is not a doctor. That's right, Moto fans, I'm not a doctor, but I am a physiotherapist, and this is the Always Moto Podcast. This is episode 33. I'm your host, David Hogan, the physiotherapist from Australia with a viewpoint into all things injuries in moto, because hashtag injuries are a part of moto. We will dive into the depths of the clinic throwing strapping tape anywhere it will stick. That's how we physios work, apparently. So... On this show, we're going to be talking World Supercross round number two from Melbourne this weekend. We have the fill-in riders that have been confirmed for MDK Motorsports and they're two Aussies, Joel Whiteman and Jackson Richardson. And we have both of them joining us for interviews on the show. It's been a great opportunity or will be a great opportunity for these boys to fill in at the final World Supercross round for 2022. They'll also be pulling double duty so there's some more plenty of ins- insider insight going into this show as we always try to give you guys and girls as listeners of the Always Moto podcast. Along with our usual segments, it'll be a little bit shorter on those other segments. This is a bit of a shorter show, more focused on Joel and Jackson's positions there that they've got to fill in for and those interviews to come with that. Uh, so as always, this show is brought to you by... Yes, it's brought to you still by me, Always Moto. Looking to change that here shortly. We're getting some more contacts. We're going to have something signed and sealed shortly. We hope to bring this show to you by a brand in the near future. But we're still looking for your support anyway, whether we have people on board or not. We want you to buy some merch to help keep the show on the road and keep putting out good, great, fantastic, whatever hyperbole you want to throw in there, content. We have Always Moto t-shirts available now. They are $25 plus postage and handling and in Australian dollars. They're they're black t-shirts, Always Moto logo front and center, and you can rock them at the races. I'll be rocking mine when I go to these Australian Supercross rounds here very shortly. Email us at alwaysmoto2019 at gmail.com to put... Your, to place your order, put t-shirt order in the subject line and send through the size you want uh, and we'll give in touch regarding payment via PayPal and delivery details. So let's jump into the show. Like I said, a little bit of a short one, just some basic review of the injuries heading into round two uh, and also these confirmation interviews we're going for for MDK, K, uh, for MDK Motorsports. I keep wanting to say MDK KTM from the old days of the AMA rounds here and I stuffed that up in the uh, Joel Whiteman interview at the beginning, but uh, it's just MDK Motorsports these days. Conveniently that those other guys were on KTMs, uh, but we are looking, it's not officially a KTM supported team. Hence why these guys were able to be able to uh, fill in Joel on a Yamaha and Jackson on a Kawasaki. So uh, good, good for them and to be able to jump in and do this double duty. So when we say double duties, they're going to be riding the Australian Supercross opening round on the Friday night. They'll also be partway through that night switching plastics in and out to put on their MDK colours to then do the warm-up um, qualifying and, and practice um, sessions for the World Supercross that are occurring during that uh, Friday night program of the Australian Open Australian Supercross round. And then on Saturday, they'll be purely World Supercross-based riders, and that means those ones will be pulling double duty. So guys like Justin Brayton, Luke Clout, 
obviously Jackson Richardson and Joel Whiteman now, uh, as long as as well as some of these world, uh, wild card riders. So we've got Brett Metcalf, Nathan Crawford, Kyle Webster. Uh, and I've just slipped my mind who's the fourth Aussie one there. But there's another Aussie there filling in. So there'll be a fair few riders pulling double duty this week, and it might be interesting because they're having a more traditional format on the Friday night for for the Aussie round compared to the Triple Crown sort of uh, format that we got, we've got we seen at Cardiff, which will be repeated for uh, Melbourne round of the World Supercross. So it'll be a busy night for those guys. I'm sure their fitness will stand up to it. Uh, Matt Moss is another one there that's going to be joining in doing that. And he'll actually be switching bike brands. So he'll be, I think I mentioned this on last week's show, that he will be on the Yamaha 450 for uh, the Australian round. And then he'll be on a Kawasaki 250 for the World Supercross round. So a bit of a bit of a confusing two days for him on bikes and whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see how he copes with that as the weekend goes on and if he has a better round one night and a worse round the next because of that bike change or not. Have to try and get his thoughts on that after the round uh, if we can get in touch with him. So just a quick one. Let's jump into some of the emergency department list. Nothing too much has changed from last time, but let's do that intro and let's get you some information on those riders prior to the round in Melbourne. The emergency department. All the injuries, all the gory details, and when they'll be back on track. It's the list you really don't want to be on. You really don't want to be on that list. It's one of those ones you just hate to be on. But anyway, part of racing, injuries are a part of moto, as our hashtag says, and hashtag the moto virus. Uh, it's all part of it, unfortunately. So just a reminder of those guys from Cardiff that had some issues, some bumps and bruises, or some broken bones and some head knocks. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so there's a couple of guys that are going to be a little secondhand and a couple of guys aren't coming at all. So And then hence those fill-in riders there. So reminder that Justin Starling had that issue for the Pipes Motorsport Group. He has what we believe is a thumb injury. No more details has come out from him or the team since that weekend in Cardiff. There's been no announcement about a fill-in rider. There's been no announcement about... Justin's availability. I and he did say that he was going for scans. Nothing was put and put out. Hoping he is a last minute inclusion, but we just don't know. I dare say he's not going to make that trip. So I wonder who will be coming for the Pipes Motorsport Group. We'll probably find out in a day or so. Now that they should be on the ground and doing some media in Melbourne over the next day or so. So we'll have to see what happens there. In terms of CDR, Yamaha rider Luke Clout, as confirmed by the team in our discussions with them earlier, or sorry, yeah, partway through uh, last week, they've confirmed that Luke is okay. He has some groin issues. There's been no sightings of him on the team's page or his own pages, Instagrams, all those things. There's been no videos of him riding. I dare say he's got a bit banged up and he's trying to do everything he can to be ready That groin injury that they reported to us is the main concern. I dare say he's got a minor tear there, maybe some bruising as well, Um, potentially some other issues in there, but we're only speculating at this stage. But they've said that he'll be racing both rounds. Hopefully he's able to be, you know, in fitness, in health enough that he can get through that in terms of his fitness and his ability to, you know, use that groin to control the bike because that's going to be an issue for him, squeezing the bike through whoops, uh, you know, ha- throwing a scrub and actually, you know, maneuvering the bike back into position because you use those groin muscles as you squeeze the bike and try to pull it back from a, you know, an angled whip position or a, in, down into a scrub. You use those muscles to help pull the bike back up straight. So it'll be interesting to see how that copes. Maybe you might see him not throwing as n- much nasty whips or, or you know, nasty scrubs. <laughs> Hence that, you know, that that Kenny Roxon one at Red Bull Straight Rhythm uh, with that race with Barsha was insane. And I don't think we'd be seeing Cloudy doing anything like that anyway, but um, he, he might be doing a little bit more straight, um, you know, dead fish flying or dead sailor flying to um, just make sure that he doesn't put any more strain than he needs to on that uh, groin issue. So we'll see how he goes, hoping he can get through both nights and, you know, fulfill his duties there for World Supercross, but then also continue through the Australian Supercross rounds, which will be straight into it again uh, the week after in Adelaide. So we'll have to see how he copes and how he pulls up and hopefully we can chat to him as well after the round to see how he managed through that injury process. As we know, MDK Motorsports riders Chad Reed with his shoulder and hand injury, he's had surgery on those. 
both areas now and is just in town. He was at MotoGP over the weekend, as you would have seen if you follow him on social media. And he will be at the round for the MDK team doing some fan engagements and probably doing some TV work, I dare say. So he's out. Um, Josh Grant hasn't travelled. He had a bad concussion at that opening round. And hence, then we have those fill-in riders that have now been confirmed by the team with Always Moto of Jackson Richardson and Joel Whiteman. And then Honda Genuine, the Honda Australia team there that is running with Dean Wilson uh, and uh, Max Anstey is on their lights team, Wilson Todd's on their team, and Kenny Roxon's on their team. Um, Dean Wilson had that AC separation, but he's in racing. He's here in town. He has been on the on the socials, p- turning plenty of laps since last time at Cardiff. So he will be fine, but he probably have a fair bit of strapping tape on that shoulder just to make sure it's got well it's well supported and stable for him in situations like whoops and cornering when he's trying to push off the bars to you know manipulate the bike through a position um, and and stay and hold it in a rut or something along those lines. So he will be probably strapped up. You know, physio will be working their magic, throwing tape anywhere it sticks, like we say in the intros and the outros. Uh, so we'll check in on him and see how he goes through the weekend. Uh, hopefully he will be able to get through everything as well. All right, that's the emergency department list heading into heading into Melbourne. We'll see how that all goes. So let's take a let's jump straight into the interview now. We're going to go straight to our first interview with Joel Whiteman and about his fill-in ride. So let's get straight into that audio. All right, joining us on the Always Moto podcast now, he's got a pretty good opportunity uh, come his way from some injuries that have happened at that opening round at Carter from the World Supercross for the MDK team. He's going to join us. He's, he's going to be filling in. It's Joel Whiteman. He's number 30, riding for Pro Motor Suspension and Yamaha in Australia, and he's going to be riding now for the MDK KTM team Oh, not KTM, sorry, MDK um, in, in World Supercross in Melbourne um, this Saturday night. It's Joel Whiteman. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah. Hey, mate. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm doing really well. I'm pretty excited for you, to be honest, and, and, for, uh, and for your t- soon-to-be teammate this weekend, at least for the Saturday round, Jackson Richardson as well, getting the opportunity to um, you know, fill in here at, at MDK. It's, it must be a pretty cool experience for you guys to get that sort of phone call. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm sure we'll both uh, be pretty stoked. Um, yeah, it all came about really quick. Um, and, yeah, it's a little bit last minute, but uh, we've been pretty on top of it to get everything sorted. So, um, yeah, it's a great opportunity for myself. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome. And so how long ago did you actually get the, the call? Like, obviously, it was only Saturday a week and a bit ago that the race happened. When did you actually get the call from the guys at MDK to say, do you want to ride for us at Saturday at Melbourne for the World Supercross? Uh, it was actually Friday morning, just gone. Um, so, yeah, I actually got a phone call from Yuri Konsky, who was, I guess, doing a bit of scouting for those guys, just being in the know with the Australian industry. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and we've had a bit of um, history together too. And, yeah, it was nice for him to put a call through and he pretty much linked me straight up with the team guys. And we were just in contact over the weekend and, um, yeah, into early this week, just full steam ahead trying to get everything organised. And, um, yeah, I, yeah, pretty much feeling ready to go racing now. <laughs> so, yeah, really, really short notice. Like we're, we're recording this Tuesday and you got the phone call Friday, just gone. So, yeah, not much time. And then obviously racing Saturday. So super fast turnaround for you. It's the whole, what, eight days there in, in this at, at some point. So, yeah, not much time at all. Yeah, no, no, it's definitely happened quick. But, um, yeah, I'm glad it's happened and really looking forward to it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, by the time I drive to the race too, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. And then the Australian round on Friday night, yeah, it's definitely all happening pretty quick. <laughs> definitely quick, yeah, mate. Yeah, definitely. So how's this going to work for you? Are you going to be on your own equipment? Are you going to be on MDK equipment? What's what's the scenario there for you? Obviously, this is super, super tight and time. There's not much that's going to be able to be changed, tested, whatever. What, what's the situation here? Are you just basically slapping a sticker on and calling yourself MDK for the weekend? What's How's it work? Yeah, almost that simple, yeah, um, which is the big positive, just having to race, you know, the Australian stuff that I was all prepped and organised for. Um, yeah, the, they're allowing me to just ride my bike gear, the whole works, and um, pretty much putting their graphics kit on. So I'll have the white MDK graphics, plastics, and seat cover, and, um, yeah, that way I'll feel 
you know, feel all comfortable in, on my own bike. And that made the de- decision for me that um, as, you know, last minute as it is, not really a whole lot's actually going to change for me on the night. So, yeah, it's it's been it's been good. So actually, I didn't I didn't pop this in one of our pre questions, but I've just thought about this as we as you were talking there, and like obviously putting on some white plastics and stuff. I've seen the schedule for the Aussie stuff on the Friday, and there's obviously some crossover uh, for like warm ups and 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 stuff for the world round the the following night built into that schedule. Are you having to switch graphics like plastics over mid midnight or like for your existing Aussie sponsors? Obviously, we mentioned a couple of those to begin with. How's are you doing that partway through the night, or are you allowed to just run this all all Friday night as well? What, what do you have to do there? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, all that nitty gritty and small logistics like that, um, we'll be yeah we'll be sorting that out once we get down into Melbourne. But look, I believe yeah I'll just be swapping plastics over uh, quite often through the weekend. <laughs> but if that's what we've got to do, man, that's that's what we'll do. So and and do you get to pit yeah. with them on on Saturday then in the in their little fold up setups that they had in Carter for such that they're probably going to have for for Melbourne as well. Yeah, 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 I'll pit with those guys for for Saturday during the the World Supercross for sure. Yeah, nice. So, is this to date? Is this like the biggest opportunity for you as part of your career with with motorcycling so far? Uh, yeah, it definitely is. As far as um, someone giving me an opportunity and a bit of a team ride, um, and just this, you know, the whole new World Supercross series for this year, it's it's definitely an exciting opportunity. I have. Um, invested in myself and uh, gone and done some AMA rounds back in 2020 okay. for six supercrosses. So yeah. that was a big opportunity, but that was, um, yeah, a lot of hard work, saving up money and organising that trip. But um, yeah, like I said, as far as a team opportunity, yeah, this is this is definitely it. Yeah, nice. So well, that's yeah, that's awesome that they that this has come about probably out of the blue too. So that's that's fantastic on that side of things. So. If you like, obviously, you've done those previous events in the states. You've now, you know, it's been a little while since we've had Supercross in Australia with all the COVID crap. Any expectations for you for the weekend in terms of results, or are you just in terms of the World Supercross at least? Are you just happy to be a part of it and just see where it takes you? Yeah, I think I'm just happy to be a part of it. I, I just want to ride my best, and as long as I ride my best, um, you know, I'll be pretty happy with the night. Um, like you said, even the Australian side of things, it's it's uh, it's been a while since we've raced supercross for me it was 2020 um san diego was the last one which was round six and that was just before covid really hit i just got back in time before that all went crazy so yeah it's definitely been a while since i've raced supercross i've you know kept practicing it and riding it here at home and kept the skills sharp so hopefully that'll you know pay off come this weekend but definitely no real expectations at the moment yeah definitely okay so and then obviously once this is done on on Saturday night, you're just continuing on with the with the Oz Supercross rounds after that, I gather. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, we won't have much of a break either. We roll straight into Adelaide the, the next weekend, and then have a little bit of time off, which will be nice before a, a local round in Newcastle. So that's going to be really cool. I'm excited for that one. Just praying for some um, some nice weather, with the <laughs> open air stadium. But um, yeah. yeah it should be good yeah fingers crossed for that one it's been pretty wet around here in newcastle being local as well yeah it's been uh been a bit rough weather wise but hopefully it's it's uh fine for that one at least um but uh with that with obviously these aussie rounds coming up and this opportunity i wasn't sure how you particularly this weekend being a friday night aussie round saturday night world round i wasn't sure how you guys are going to approach this from the point of view of you're going to try and wrap yourself in cotton wool on on Friday night to make sure you get to Saturday night and or has the team even mentioned anything about that? Are they worried about that side of things to make sure you can actually get to this feeling right on, on Saturday? Uh, no, they haven't mentioned anything and um, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to um, think too much about it, man. Like every time we practice during the week is always a risk there, especially with Supercross. So I'm just trying to approach it too. Like just, a, you know, we had the Oz X open back in the day Um they used to do two rounds like Saturday, yep. uh, Friday, Saturday night, just like this. So just approach it like that and just do my best both nights and it's all I can do. I feel like if you try and ride a bit, you know, like you said, wrap yourself in cotton wool or ride a bit nervous or anything, that's half the time when something can go wrong. So, yeah, just uh, head in, try and do my best both nights. 
Yeah, no, it's probably from my point of view with the, with the injury side of things that I always get to report on. Um, it's probably best just to take it and and go with everything and just ride the way you normally naturally ride because yeah, it, it it will happen if something something dumb happens when you try to be a bit more sensible. That's usually how it goes anyway. So yeah, definitely, man, definitely. So yeah, that's my approach. Just um, yeah, just hundred percent for both nights and just uh, see how we come out. Yeah, definitely. No, look, it's a it's a sensational opportunity. I'm glad that they, um, you know, the MDK guys have been able to use the Aussie guys that are coming. Probably we're already going to be at the event anyway to, um, you know, fill in and give you guys an opportunity. Hopefully, some TV time and maybe even, you know, some personal interviews like this, but also on the TV coverage to, you know, give you guys some exposure. Maybe maybe help out with the ride for next year. We'll, we'll have to see how it goes, but yeah, just pretty happy that you guys are getting this opportunity and appreciate your time coming on the Always Motor Podcast, mate. Yeah, no, thanks thanks for having me. And, um, yeah, it's always good. I, you know, any exposure for, for me, especially being a privateer, it's, um, you know, it's hard to come by. So, yeah, I appreciate your time and um, having me on. And, yeah, thanks very much. No worries, man. We'll hopefully see you down there. No worries, man. Talk soon. Thanks, Joel. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys, this is Grant Harlan, and this is the Always Moto Podcast. All right, guys and girls, we're back. Thanks for listening to the Always Moto podcast. We're going to jump straight into Dave's diatribe now. This is Dave's diatribe. What's a diatribe? A diatribe is a forceful and bitter attack against someone or something. So keep your head down. You might be next. That's right, you could be next. It's amazing how many people are going to get attacked with this one. No, not really, not really. But I have a little, little myth that I'm about... Uh, pissed off about for this weekend heading to Melbourne. Um, Got to say, flight prices are absolutely jacked out of sight at the moment. They are ridiculous. Normal flights, like I'm going from, uh, in this instance, Newcastle area, so Newcastle or Sydney, we could do either, um, down to Melbourne. Normally you can get some flights for that for, you know, 100 to 200 bucks plus, you know, so that's one way in return. So you get out of it for four or 500 bucks. No dramas, you know, in a special time, maybe even cheaper. At the moment, I'm looking at over a grand to get down and back in flight prices. It's just insane. I can't believe how this COVID situation has shit stirred everything up and make prices and obviously fuel prices at the moment are just completely stuffing everything around. So it's making it quite difficult. So I'm a bit pissed off at that. Can't Not making things easy. And then obviously um, Melbourne prices for accommodation – that's not even any better. It is just as bad. A hotel for like three, four, five hundred bucks is where we're looking at for one night. It's just insane. Melbourne, you guys are kidding yourselves. I can get something up here for probably a hundred bucks easy. Maybe just up to one fifty, and I'd be in a bloody suite. But you know, that's just that's just Melbourne for you. Bit um, bit annoyed at that. Uh, can't complain too badly, but that's where we're at. So money, money, money. But anyway, that's the diatribe for this week. Um, like a little bit tame. But that's where we're at. Hopefully, we'll have something better after more moto related after this weekend in Melbourne. Let's jump into the interview now with the second fill in rider uh, for the MDK guys this weekend. It's Aussie Jackson Richardson. We're able to get him on the line and have a chat to him about the opportunity. So let's jump straight into uh, that interview right now. All right, second guest of the podcast this week for us here at Always Moto. It's another rider that's going to be filling in at Melbourne for this World Supercross round, also on the MDK team. Uh, He's going to be riding for Empire Kawasaki on Friday night for the Australian round. He's going to be MDK on Saturday night. He's number 57, Jackson Richardson. How are you doing, Jackson? Yeah, really good, mate. Cheers for having me on. No, look, I appreciate you guys giving us some time to to um to to talk about the um, opportunity you've got here, and it sounds pretty exciting from my vantage point. So, um, yeah, I just appreciate you being here. Yeah, nah, nah, thank you, mate. Always a pleasure. So, how did this how did this uh, ride come about, and and when did you get the call um, to say, hey, do you want to fill in on MDK for World Supercross? Uh, I've got the call for it on, um, on Friday. Uh, lo- yeah, Friday just gone. So yeah, I got the call up about possibly filling in on, on, uh, the MDK team for the WSX round on the Saturday. And then, um, yeah, we pretty much like just getting in contact with the team and finding out if it was going to be possible. Cause I had to make sure it was okay with my team and my sponsors and like work out how, work it out between both parties to make sure that um 
like it was all going to work uh, for everyone. So yeah, we were able to get it done, and then um, then yeah, pretty much on pretty much on Monday we got it all confirmed. So so yeah, it was good to have that done, and yeah, be able to line up for both both days of racing now. Yeah, perfect. So your team was hopefully fairly comfortable with you doing that. Obviously, we, we believe you're using your own equipment for this round, seeing as the short period, you don't have any chance to you know use anything that's existing because you wouldn't have a chance to test. But so your team here in Oz was was okay about all this, I gather. Yeah, yeah, we just had to work out a few small details, but um, yeah, that was probably it was probably like perfect situation for me in terms of like um, the MDK team isn't tied to any particular brand of motorcycle so they were happy for me to use uh the bike that i've been riding currently with the empire team and um yeah so that so that was a huge plus for me because yeah it would have been pretty difficult to like either switch manufacturers or like just go on to a completely different bike like overnight so um yeah that'd be pretty difficult so yeah luckily i was able we were able to make this work and ride my current setup and so that way it's not going to be a huge adjustment for me the next day yeah so yeah it worked out really well yeah nice that would be rather difficult literally to follow up than following day on a different bike altogether that would be that would probably suck so (laughs) yeah (laughs) absolutely so what are you actually going to get to use from mdk is it just literally stickers graphic like graphics on the plastics and away you go or or is there, is there anything else that you know support wise from them that's going to come out of this yeah that yeah basically that's what it is yeah i'm like just running some of uh their stickers and like running under like running under their uh pit area for the day yep so so yeah like pretty much i'm running like all my my current setup from um like uh uh empire and like we run, we run like uh, similar stuff to what they like. They use Dunlop tires. We use Dunlop as well. So that's like handy. that, yeah, that's really handy. Yeah, so that works out really well. And then, and then, yeah. So yeah, we just basically had to get little details like ironed out to make sure all parties were all parties were okay with it. And um, yeah, so it, it was all good to go. So yeah, luckily, luckily it wasn't too big of a headache because. Because yeah, yeah, it could have been just as easy to for like my sponsors and that to say no and like not line up for it. But yeah, I was I was stoked that um, they were all hands on deck with it and wanted to be a part of it. So yeah, it's good to have. Well, hopefully, like I, I look at it sensibly, right? Like hopefully for both parties, one they're getting you to fill in from MDK side of things. So one they don't get a, I, I believe there's a fine system, right? If they don't have somebody to fill yeah. in for an injured rider, yeah, so that's yeah, that's, that's positive correct. for them, right? But then from your side, one you're getting a chance to make some more money and some exposure, and then from your Aussie team side of things, you, they're still going to be the the ones that are looked at and uh, and you know get some exposure as well for the sponsors of that team because they've given you the chance to go out that extra night and push your name around, hopefully, on the TV coverage and, you know, seen ideally around the world as per a World Supercross round, you know. So there's there's positives on, on all sides of it and, and hopefully that's why you guys have been able just to let the, your, your sponsors let you out and do this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it, yeah, that's pretty much what it all came down to was just, yeah, working – it was like just working out little things between the parties, but yeah, but yeah, like, like even, even from like um, a spectator's perspective, like obviously you'd go like, Oh, it's a, it's, Oh, it's a win-win for everyone. But yeah, there's certain details that you've got to work out when you're dealing with these sort of things. And uh, luckily we were able to do that. And, um, and yeah, I'm just happy to be a part of it and go and race it on Saturday now, which will be awesome. Yeah, definitely. And so, look, that, that race on Saturday now, like, obviously, it's probably one of the bigger events that you will have done. You've obviously had some rides overseas as well. Um, but how's this rank in your career for, for opportunities and, and, you know, big events side of things? Uh, you know what? I, I'm, not, I'm not really looking at it from a magnitude sort of thing. Like, it's an opportunity. Like, I've got a good opportunity with the Empire team that they've given me for Supercross this year. I was lucky and fortunate enough to pick pick that up and then 
yeah, coming into this thing, it's just, you just got to make the best out of whatever opportunity you're given. And obviously it, I've been given a good one, but yeah, it's all about what you do with it. So, so yeah, I'm not going to go pop and champagne or anything. <laughs> just yet. We still got to perform. So, so yeah, I just got to keep the head down and uh, make the most of it. You're meant to aim for pop the champagne on, on Saturday night, like in the yeah. evening sometime towards the end of the event, isn't it? Isn't that how yeah, it works? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal at this point. So do you have an expectation then for the event? Obviously seeing, you know, how the guys ran on in Cardiff and, you know, and you've probably competed against some of them at some point. Do you have any expectation on how you're going to fit into this on, on Saturday in Melbourne? Uh, look, you know what, especially for me, because I've been, I've been away from the scene for a little bit, so I haven't really competed against anyone at this point in time. So, so I'll be honest, I don't exactly, I don't, and you're never going to know for sure how you're going to go. Yep. Like, really? You, I mean, you can say that and everything. All I'll say is, like, I've been, I've had a more than ideal preparation this season i've been working hard with the team we've been yeah we've been working our ass off and uh i feel good it's probably it's probably one of the better times that i've felt on the bike currently i've been nice. gelling good with the cowie yep and um and yeah i'm in good shape i'm probably like in one of the probably at the time at this moment probably the healthiest i've ever been like physically which is which is a plus so <laughs> so yeah i'm coming in prepared and um we'll see how we go i'm confident i could do good but i mean hey you never know and like you're going against like some of the baddest dudes ever in the aussie series and in the wsx True. series so yeah, yeah won't really know until we get out on track so i'm not gonna go <laughs> not claiming go nothing right now <laughs> yeah oh, my my expectations are to keep them low and then anything <laughs> Anything above that will be a huge plus. Yeah, that's, that's fair call. And obviously, this is obviously round one for the Aussie round, so you don't you haven't got anything to pair on that side of things either. So yeah, fair enough. And it's probably a, a good idea to, like you said, keep it a little bit low expectation. And if you overachieve, sweet, it makes it all feel better. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's it. So with these two rounds, obviously you've got the Aussie round on the Friday night, the World round on the Saturday night. How are you approaching Friday night to make it to Saturday night? Is there any sort of wrapping yourself up in in cotton wool or bubble wrap to sort of make sure you get to Saturday night or are you just approaching each one individually and and just taking it and seeing where it goes? Nah, I'm just taking it race by race. race. We're going to be trying to rip the lid off it at any given point. (laughs) Nice. And then it's, and then anything deviating away from the on from the original plan is like usually usually not ideal. <laughs> no, it usually doesn't work out too well for you if you start slowing yeah, down or, or being cautious. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, if you try to be cautious and you're not really firing 100% because you're trying to save yourself, that's when stuff can kind of go wrong. So so no, nah, we're just going to give it give it our best shot each night because obvi- obviously I want to do well on both nights, but like um but yeah, obviously I want to be in contention for the Aussie championship as well. I want to I want to really be in the hunt for that thing since it's such a short series. So every race counts. So yeah, yeah. we got to be firing on all cylinders. And so that's where you're obviously heading, like you're doing all five rounds. Um, and that's the focus mainly for you. Obviously the world round is, is a bonus and then the Aussie stuff is, is the primary key objective. Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, yeah, look, it's, it's a big opportunity. I hope, I think it's a big opportunity to get out and get some exposure and, and hopefully make some more money. I'm really stoked that they gave this opportunity to some Aussie guys in yourself and Joel. And look, I hope you guys get the chance to perform well on Saturday. Yeah, mate. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hopefully we can get out there and give it a good run. Yeah, definitely. Look, and uh, we'll hopefully see you down there. Um, and look, appreciate your time for the, for the Always Moto podcast and good luck with the MDK guys on Saturday. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Hey, I'm Luke Neese, riding for the SGB Honda team, and you're listening to the Always Moto podcast. All right, guys and girls, thanks for sticking around and listening to both of those interviews and the whole Always Moto podcast. As always, we're very thankful for your listening and your ears being put to our our channel or our podcast feed, however you want to look at it these days. You can't say the old radio crap. It's not the same as it was. It's podcast, it's digital, all that blah, blah, blah. 
But thank you for listening to our stuff. So appreciate that a lot. That's it for this show. Bit of a short show, but we just wanted to get those introductions of Jackson and Joel for the MDK guys uh, and the opportunity that they have this weekend for World Supercross Round 2 in Melbourne. It's hopefully going to be some good promotion for them and a little bit you know, for the team and for their um, Aussie teams as well and Aussie sponsors to get some exposure on that world stage for letting them be able to do uh, take up that opportunity. So really appreciate those guys coming on. I'm excited for them. Hopefully they get a good run on Friday and Saturday at the Melbourne Round. So a great show. Um, a reminder, just for this weekend for the World Supercross, to go to uh, wsx.tv to find out how to watch it live for your region. Um, it's on that website there. You'll find out all the answers. For Aussie guys and girls, it's 7 Plus. Works quite well. you just got to sign up. So it's all free if you want to use the 7 Plus app to watch the World Supercross. If you don't get to watch it on TV, obviously come back to the podcast next week. We'll have more of an update and hopefully some more rider interviews for you to listen to and get some good insight from the round and what we thought happened and all those results and everything from there, from World Supercross. Don't forget to send us your T-shirt orders, alwaysmoto2019 at gmail.com. Get those orders over to us to help support the show and we'll keep putting out more and more content. Follow us on social media for updates. Uh, to stay up to date with all of our updates and all the stuff that we haven't had a chance to get in or that we found out after we've hit record or finished the record and posted it onto the sites for the shows because there's plenty more information that we put out there that we don't get into some of these shows in time to be relevant. So search Always Moto on your favorite uh, social media app and then hit follow or subscribe or both. (laughs) Make sure you subscribe to the podcast feed so you get the next episode when it comes out ASAP. If your podcast app allows, please leave us a rating. It helps us to stay relevant and get found by more people and we then in turn get more listeners and have more motivation to keep putting out great content. That's it for another show, guys and girls. Thank you for listening. Remember, you've got to be smooth to be fast because if you're not, I'll probably be seeing you deep in the emergency department, maybe even the clinic having strap and tape thrown just at you, whatever it sticks, wherever it sticks. Thanks for listening, guys and girls.